For today's episode, I'm gonna show everybody how I practice TIG welding to get better. What's up? Welcome to another episode from Pacific Arc TIG Welding. My name's Dusty. Thanks very much for checking out today's episode. To all the arc heads who watch the show every week, what's up? Welcome back. I appreciate it very much. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to jump back and check out some previous episodes. Uh, we do everything TIG welding related on this channel. One of my favorite things to do is TIG welding art pieces. I do these wild art pieces. They take me like 10 plus hours to make. I spend tons of time doing it. They push me to the limit to learn new things and uh, make things very difficult for myself again. I do both two-dimensional and three-dimensional sculpture pieces. So again, check that out if you're keen on art welding or metal art or stuff like that. I got lots of it on my channel to show. As well as art pieces, I do demonstrations on different TIG welding stuff like we're gonna do today. We're gonna do a little TIG welding how-to. I have plenty of episodes on different demos that I've done so far, so be sure to jump back and check those out. Another thing I like doing on this channel is TIG welding uh, gear reviews and gear breakdowns. So again, first time checking out this channel, jump back and check out some of the previous catalog. There's a lot there to watch now. So today's episode, we're gonna do some practice exercises. I'm really excited for this one. I've been welding for about 18 years, give or take, uh, maybe even longer. I've lost track, it's been a while. I've been TIG welding for a long time. And even though I've been TIG welding for a long time, guess what? I still practice and I practice often. I do these exercises once every few days, to be honest. Uh, maybe, yeah, it depends what I'm doing. If I'm switching machines, using a different machine I haven't used before, I'll run a couple of these exercises just to get familiar with the machine again, get used to the settings, and kind of find my steady hand. Uh, sometimes, as you've seen on the channel, <laughs> I get a little shaky to start with, especially I'm sipping on a coffee here right now, so it might be a little shaky, but these things are great. These uh, couple exercises I'm gonna show you are going to help you uh, get a little bit more of a keen eye for what we're looking for. So how do I practice? Do I leave comments like a butthead on Facebook and Instagram on other people's welding pictures? No, I do not do that. Matter of fact, I would encourage everybody watching out here, don't do that. There's too much negativity in the welding scene and stuff that I see sometimes, it just drives me insane. On this channel, I am all about positivity and encouraging people. Anybody that's down with my channel, uh, down with Pacific Arc TIG Welding, we're all about positivity here. Sorry, I went off on a little tangent there. I apologize, got, got heated for a second. But, no, I really am lost now. <laughs> so, what do I practice? I practice these couple exercises that I'm gonna show you here right now. And. What you're probably thinking I'm gonna be practicing is super hard and super difficult joints and overhead configurations and stuff like that. I do not practice that way. I keep it very, very simple. All I do is I trace lines and specific patterns on a couple plates and I'll do these two exercises just to get warmed up usually. So as you can see, I have scribed these two plates here. These two plates have two different types of welding patterns that I like to practice and these are my favorite. The first one here is just basically using about three lanes or weld paths, whatever you want to call them, on a clean piece of aluminum here. I have cleaned both of these pieces of aluminum with uh, a wire brush as well as acetone, so they are spick and span, or they should be at least. But this is the first one I usually typically practice with. So why this one is good is I'm going to be following these lines here. So all I'm going to do is follow one of these lines, and what it's going to do is it's going to tell me how good I am doing that, that current day with the machine that I'm using and weld settings that I'm using, I'm gonna be eyeballing my weld width. So I'm gonna be following the line here, but I'm gonna be eyeballing the weld width. So that what I mean by that is the amount of weld on either side of the line here, I wanna keep fairly consistent. Obviously, if I'm doing a stop in the middle, and then I'm gonna start again, a stop start or a tie-in, whatever you wanna call it. This is a great way to uh, check kind of how your tie-in or your stop starts are. This is a great exercise for doing that because like I said, it's gonna teach you how to eyeball the line. Uh, it'll keep you nice and straight, which is easy and great, but you will have to eyeball the width on either side of the line, which is a great exercise here because you'll kind of get your eye warmed up for it as well as uh, adjusting your foot pedal up and down to get it uh, kind of pimped out to follow the line the same width the whole way. Also, another fun thing about doing an uh, exercise like this here is I can work with the edges. So I weld in the middle of the plate here, uh, even if the plate is dead cold like it is right now, your heat input is gonna be different here than it will out here. Like I said, if this is dead cold or if this is dead cold, the same settings will be different because you're closer to the edge on this one. Your heat's gonna be pulled towards the edge a little more. As you start to weld the weld paths towards the outside, you will have to learn how to overcompensate with your, with your foot pedal a little bit uh, to uh, adjust for that. So again, not only are you gonna be paying attention to your weld width uh, and a tie-in or whatever you wanna call it in the middle, 
but you will also have to be adjusting to uh, your plate as it heats up and your weld will be pulled more and more towards the edge. So this is a great one to practice. It gives you a few different variables of what to be ready for and uh, basically how to get better experience on how to deal with those variables. So this guy here is actually another fun one that I do, especially when I'm warming up for an art piece. What you're basically gonna be doing is you can see I've scribed a pattern, it's kind of like a, like a dinosaur claw. You're gonna be welding from thick to thin. So you're gonna be welding again with a wider weld path up at the top here. So I'll be doing a weave pattern and then I'll probably stop somewhere around the middle, get comfortable again, and then I weld out and then I will finish at low amperage because we're gonna be going towards the edge of the plate. And you're gonna be basically finishing off with a nice cool single step pass. So your pass will no longer be weaved, probably past about this point here. But this is a great way to practice because again, you're gonna be uh, compensating for the plate as it heats up. You're gonna be working uh, with multiple steps. So I'll probably do, let's call it a three step to start with. Uh, switch down to about two steps somewhere around here and then uh, from there on out I'll adjust to single step whenever I get to the point where I feel like I want to and then finish off with a nice clean little finish there that's super thin. So before we get going uh, let's set up the machine real quick here and then we'll light it up and do some weld passes. So let's fire up the old Cano Weld 201 Pulse D here. In the back. Just wait for the fan to turn off here and then I'll show you what I'm using for settings. There we go, fan turns off after a second, nice and quiet in here again. So uh, we are welding on AC alternating current, obviously for aluminum here. Uh, for amperage, I'm gonna be welding at, let's turn that down just a little bit, about 140 amps, uh, no downslope, about five or so seconds of post flow, about 35% on the positive side, 100 hertz or for frequency, uh, a little bit of pre-flow, no upslope, 140 amps, boom, there we go, let's do it. So I'll give you a quick little demo on what I'm using for a torch here. I'm using a 26 style torch, uh, pretty basic. This is just a whip that came with one of my machines, so pretty basic. But I'll show you what we got going on in here. I have a 332 setup going in here for collets. I have a standard gas lens, nothing crazy going in there. I have a 2% lanthanated tungsten. I prefer these guys for aluminum in my shop. Again, everybody has their own little preference. That's what I use in here. It's all good if you use something different. And then a number eight cup from Furick. Uh, Michael Furick makes these guys. They are badass. Check out his stuff. His Instagram handle is on screen right now. He makes all kinds of gas management systems for torches that are awesome. So again, number eight cup, 332, 2% lanthanated tungsten, uh, and a 26 torch. Pretty simple, but let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. I'm basically gonna weld to about the halfway point here, then I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna weld on the weld path closest to the edge, which will be the trickiest of the passes. That's like I said, it's closer to the edge of the plate, but everything's good here. It's all clean for the most part. I'm uh, going to get nice and comfortable, get ready to weld, and here we go. Okay, let's take a look at that one real quick here. So there's the first half of it there. So far everything looks pretty clean for the most part. You can see the weld is relatively shiny, which is good. It shows that uh, my balance has probably worked out to where it needs to be. I did notice a little bit of contaminant coming out of the scribe line there. So perhaps I could have scrubbed that a little harder, but regardless, it burns off. And it's just a practice run, so let's not stress about it too much. But there we go. So there's the first half. I'm gonna tie in and finish the second half there. But you can see, for the most part, I try to keep it relatively the same width the whole way down. So that's what we're going for there. Another thing that you can watch as you're doing it is that your reinforcement height about the same the whole way down, which is good. So that means the fill that I put in was adequate and about consistent from start to finish. Nothing changed too much from beginning to end. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just finish this. This plate is hot. It's still 
Let's pull it up in quick. It's still hot. I just finished that weld. Uh, I'm going to tie in and finish it. And like I said, we'll finish probably around here somewhere. The plate's going to be mad hot by the end of it here. So you're going to have to watch that I adjust for it. I'm going to back off the heat quite a bit. But here we go. Let's do it. Let's finish it up. Okay, so I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to finish up right around here. I'm going to get nice and comfortable. I'm going to try and blend in as much as I can. And then we'll get going and uh, compensate with heat as we get towards the end. Here we go. there we go let's stop and take a quick look and see how it turned out okay that is screaming hot but there we go so the tie-in was relatively good I probably could have let it sit in a little bit longer right there uh, a couple puddles past the tie-in but overall for a practice run this is pretty good you can see our wetted edge blended in pretty nice here so for the most part I'm pretty happy with that guy there but again that's a great example of how you can basically use your eyeball and get a little better at eyeballing the width of your weld because all you're doing is you're basically just following a straight line and then the width and the heat input is completely up to you so you get to kind of freestyle that as you go and then obviously you'll have a look and see when you're finished and it should end up being pretty consistent the whole way all right so everybody I hope you enjoyed this first episode uh, we're gonna break this into two parts Today we just learned how to set up and run some clean lines on a piece of plate. Kind of master our control, heat control and technique as far as all that goes. So be sure to stick around for the next episode. It's going to be part two in this how I practice my TIG welding series. Next one up we're going to do the claw. And it's a crazy shape I carved on the piece of plate. Kind of looks like a dinosaur claw or a claw of any kind. <laughs> But again, I really appreciate if you watched and enjoyed this episode. If you enjoyed this episode and you know anybody else out there who's learning how to TIG weld, pass these episodes along. Helps my channel grow. Helps somebody else learn maybe a few shortcuts to getting better a little quicker. And if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe, like, and share to my channel. I really appreciate it. But to anybody that watched today's episode, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. I hope everyone's doing all right out there. Do something nice for a stranger, a random act of kindness. Help someone out who's broke down on the side of the road. Uh, write something nice on a stranger's Instagram page, anything. Just a random act of kindness. We need more positivity in the world today. So that's your mission. But again, thank you so much for watching today's episode. I really, really appreciate it. My name's Dusty from Pacific Arc TIG Welding. Have a good one. Peace.